Hi everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Sunday service. Let me get this sorted out here. Hi Mitch and Morgan and Anna B and Devin, Elena. Welcome everyone. Kim, Lupe, Nicole, Alice, Catherine, Sarah. Good evening from Kirsten in Austria, Doiga, Era in Ohio. Welcome everyone. We've got a special Sunday service happening. Hi Catherine in Argentina. So we'll just gather together for a couple of minutes before we begin. Um, and I welcome you as you gather just to literally kind of soften back into wherever you're sitting and let your being gather here, feel it, call it home. Hi, Anna and Renee. So here's where we are. We are, we've just finished, um, a few weeks ago, we finished these, this series of four Sunday services, mostly around the journey of the descent and the resurrection. Right now, because we have just entered the season of Beltane, particularly in the Northern Hemisphere, particularly around where I am in these temperate areas, we are today celebrating the sacred marriage. We're celebrating and remembering. I wanted to bring forward some of the deeper honey-tongued truths of the sacred marriage and the lineage, the remembrance that's in most of us, if not all of us, about the right of Beltane, the rights of fertility, the renewal of the covenant between human sexuality and the earth and the well-being of all of creation, the bestowal of kingship, right? And the, the right of the sacred marriage in the bridal chamber. So I realize that's a lot of mentionings with a lot of, without a lot of explanation, but that's what, where we're going today. Hi everyone. Okay, so just going ahead and arriving for a moment. And I'm so glad I'm covering Beltane. Greetings from Ireland. And just a reminder that Sunday services are not as discussion oriented because there are so many of you. They're not as discussion oriented as some of my other um, offerings. So there will be moments to kind of come into the chat and have some sharing. And I definitely welcome you to presence yourself here, but I just won't be able to respond to everything. The way that our Sunday service flow is going to move is that we'll start here together. We'll start in prayer. Then we'll go into an invocation of Beltane, of the sacred marriage, and what the vow is, what we're renewing inside of ourselves, each one of us, as this turn of the wheel moves. Then we'll actually go into practice together. I want to always in Sunday service actually generate um, generate something for us each to take that's authentic and true for each of us. We're going to work with a Congress or lovemaking between heaven and earth. And we'll close with a prayer again. So that's where we're going in our just about hour together. Um, and welcome everyone. So um, let's go ahead and start with Let's start with prayer, yeah, where we should always begin. Let's fix my earring first, because you don't want to be looking at my earring all messed up. Oh, well, the earring has left the building, which is fine. All right. <laughs> so let's go ahead and begin together in prayer. Hi, Madeira. If it's safe for you to do so, please close your eyes and join me here. Taking a few deep breaths, making yourself receptive, choosing to soften, choosing to 
to gather yourself here. Choosing to drink from this deeper well, this deep feminine tradition, what lives inside of it, what you will feel for you is true. What is here for you? Listening deeply. Listening from your heart. Beautiful and blessed shepherdess, holy mother goddess, we are gathering in your name and under your protection to celebrate you, to celebrate your union with your beloved, to remember inside of ourselves what it is for heaven and earth to make love inside of us. When you turn the wheel and you bring us again and again to renewal, then you bring us again and again to the abundance and pleasure and beauty of your ways. We thank you. We want to remember you. We want to honor and be a part of you, your abundance, your generosity, your wisdom, your flame. And we want to partake in the union that you know. The union that has been here before we were. Please bring us close. Please open us to receive from you direct. To remember in our bodies what's most true. To bear witness as lights are lit again inside of our beings, our minds, our hearts, and our wombs. To bear witness and then to nourish those flames, what you light inside of us as we gather here together today. Mm, Blessed be. Hi, Renee, Nita, Gretchen. So here we are, we are I recognize you're all over the world. I'm speaking from Beltane. I'm speaking from the turn of the wheel that moves into springtime. I want to give you just a little context to make sure that we're all understanding what I'm talking about. So in the seasonal wheel, according to the Celtic tradition, the traditions of Avalon, which is mostly my blood, right, from the British Isles, the wheel turns through what you're most familiar with probably the solstices and the equinoxes, right? Think of the wheel like this. As it moves through, as the wheel of the year turns and moves through the the full circle, there are also cross quarters. So if you think about it, the we start at the north with the winter solstice. We move to the east with spring equinox to the south with summer solstice and then again to the west with um, fall equinox, right? In between those are the cross quarters. And the cross quarters for me are actually the most special and the most uh, resonant holy days to celebrate. The cross quarter up here as we move into just just before spring equinox between solstice and equinox is in bulk, the first milk. And here we are now. After spring equinox, before summer solstice, with the holy day of Beltane, right? May 1st, solar Beltane. May 7th, which is upcoming still. So I'm going to have some suggestions for you to celebrate 
is lunar Beltane, meaning the full moon closest to Beltane. So Beltane, traditionally, you remember May Day, you know, the Maypole. I don't know how you've connected with the tradition if you have, but essentially it is the celebration of fertility. And inside of that, it's the celebration of the union between the goddess and the horned god, right? You could think of it as the above and below, god, goddess, however you kind of language that union for yourself. But it's the eternal lovemaking. It's an acknowledgement, a celebration of this union that is happening and yearns to happen always and has throughout all time, right? It's from this union that all fertility comes. So when, you're ce when we're celebrating Beltane, we're feeling the sap rise. We are kind of renewing our covenant with life, right? And I want to just explain to you or, or tell the story to you of how I hold the holy day, like the story of the holy day of Beltane. So what you might know already is that one of the traditions of Beltane, Eve, is, you know, there's the Beltane fire. The fire where I always, you know, I always offer up my sexuality anew every year. I offer it to be purified by the fire and then returned back to me. I claim it as my own and I let it be purified and returned to me. So for me, always Beltane is a time, and I'm inviting you into this as well, a time to renew my vow to the holy gift of my own sexuality how I'm sharing that, how I'm tending that, what's true now. So every Beltane, when the turn comes, when the turn of the wheel comes, I sit in front of the fire and I move into prayer there and I ask, what's true now? Right? And I listen. And I offer up the year. I offer up the full cycle of what has happened in my body, in my sexuality, in my experiences of union or not, right? To the fire. It's a time of renewal and purification. That's how I sit at the Beltane fire. People jump over the fire. It's a purifying presence, right? For me, it's also a presence of remembrance. One of the ways traditionally that Beltane is celebrated is that all the community would gather and go into, find their way in couples to the woods, to the fields and make love and bless the earth, bless life with their lovemaking. One of the reasons that that's so powerful for us to remember and to reclaim as a holy right, as a sacred right, is that it's such an embrace of sexuality as a natural, free, celebrated, and naturally holy human birthright, human gift, right? There is no, this is the sanctification of the body of sexuality naturally. There's nothing, it's an embrace within the culture, right? Within sacred context of sexuality, of desire, of the way that we come together in sexual intimacy. Right? the way that we share that fire with each other. So there's a freedom represented in the celebration of Beltane. There's a, there is a free expression, um, a welcome and an expanse given to sexuality. It's opened, it's freed, right? People are making love all over the woods. It's how we like to think of it in our story, right? All over the fields. So one of the things that we reclaim in Beltane during Beltane times is the natural rightness of our sexuality, right? The freedom of it, really purified from all of the conditioning, purified from all the forces that try to push and pull, make it something that it isn't, vilify, commodify, right? All of that, all it is, is celebrating God in the most natural, pleasurable, one of the most natural, pleasurable ways that we have the gift, gift of the goddess, this body, this pleasure, this union, right? So I bring that to you just as part of remembering again 
to just remembering the natural rightness that no, it's not given that kind of place in our overculture currently, but that lives in our blood and that lives in what we are and what we remember and what we know to be true. So when we come to the Beltane fire, we remember again what we know to be true, even though our overculture, even though our world, even though all of these things and forces, all these conditionings would have us believe otherwise. We remember what's true and we remember it in our blood. We remember it in our bodies, right? This is natural and this is holy and it's simple. So that is the community celebration, right? That is the embrace of just the beauty of sexuality, the natural holiness of it. What I wanna bring your attention to as part of Beltane is the rite of the sacred marriage because that lives in our blood as well. And it's a deeper calling. So the rite of the sacred marriage is like this. Every year, a priestess is prepared for the sacred marriage. And as an embodiment of goddess, as an embodiment of the earth herself, she is welcomed into the bridal chamber, right? As priestess, as bride. She's joined there by often whoever it will be in the culture, in the community, who will serve as king, who will serve as ruler, who will hold power, right? Whatever man that is who's coming up, who's choosing, who's been given the role of ruler, of king, right? What's really important, there, there are, when you let yourself feel into what that is, what I invite you to feel into is a few things. First of all, all the community would celebrate this union, right? They would, there is a way that this is the height, this is the kind of pinnacle of the Beltane celebration, where priestess and king are joined in union, right? So everyone is both participating in that union and also elevating and honoring it outside of themselves. Imagine how the priestess is holding herself. She knows that she's an incarnation of all of life. She knows that she is an incarnation of the earth, what creation can bring forth, right? She knows that she is holy ground. So when the king comes to her, when he who would rule comes to her in this ceremony, he is coming not as a conqueror and not as someone overpowering her or demanding anything. He comes as a supplicant. And it's by being welcomed into her body in sexual union that the power to rule, the right to rule, the right to kingship is given right? It is given through her pleasure, through her opening, and through her incarnation as the earth, as the goddess herself. I'm assuming that, that you can feel how relevant that is to this relationship of union and balance in sexuality, what it really is for, when you understand that the one who comes to be made king, to be made ruler, comes on his knees. Well, standing tall, right? This is a king being. But there is no taking of power here. And the, pow the incredible beauty and truth that the power to rule, the wisdom of stewardship, all that is needed in order for someone to actually hold the well-being of the community and of the earth, is given from inside of the body of woman. It's a gift. And it comes from the body of woman. A woman who knows what she was created to be. Who has risen up into her own incarnation and remembrance of what she really is. What she really holds. And what the power of that is. It's the power to make kings. It's the power to call men in this case, but anyone forward into their nobility to teach them how to steward life. And where does that come from? That comes from the understanding of how to open a woman's body. 
So when you are in, when you're here and I'm inviting you into a renewal of your vow to your own sexuality, a renewal of your vow to how you hold, who you are, what this body is and what she is here for, right? What she's capable of, what she's yearning for to become and to be entered by. I invite you to remember this again and again and again, that your body, when opened by someone who has a king, who's king in their heart, bequeaths the wisdom and the knowing and the rightness of power, of, of rulership, of leadership, of kingship, right? That it's you, there's nobility in sexuality. So when you think about oh, everybody making love in the fields, it's just beautiful and it's free and it's the rightness and the natural, it's, it, there's an openness to it, right? There's this, and that lives in us. Just this knowing this is celebratory, this is, this is wonderful, this is natural, this is to be free, right? There's that in our blood, there's that in our remembrance, and we remember the sacred marriage. We remember also the call to contain, the call to come into purity and ceremony and the kind of the enclosure of the bridal chamber and to elevate sexuality also that it's both, that it is this natural, simple, easy, beautiful force that can join us, that brings pleasure, that brings life, right? And it is also the doorway to ex exaltation, right? And nobility and power and stewardship, right stewardship and right relationship to all of creation. If you read back through I wish I had brought one for you. If you read back through the, the hymns of the marriage of Inanna and Dumuzi, even the Song of Solomon in the Bible, all of that erotic poetry, all of that erotic invocation is sourced in nature. It's talking about the grapevine and the apple tree and the quince in the fields and the... <laughs> You know, the reeds growing tall in the reed beds by the stream and the honey and the milk, right? A lap full of milk, the honey, the seed, right? One of the things that we know from the sacred marriage and from Beltane is that our sexuality, how we open, what we experience and how we, you, how we come together in sexuality with another has direct relationship actually to the well-being of all of creation. When, when Beltane is celebrated, it's not just celebrated because sex is wonderful and pleasure is a gift of the goddess. It's celebrated because this is part of how we give back to creation. This is part of how we understand the beauty and the, the way that life moves and lives and thrives in creation is through returning our sexuality to its rightful place and understanding it as, as this, as fertility for the entire creation, right? So when you're making love with someone and you wonder why it is that you want your sexuality to come deeper, that you're kind of done with the sass and the play and the, all the pictures and the images of sex and the, the doing of sex and all of the things that have been conditioned and all the, all the crap that's in the overculture, when you just feel the hollowness of it and you want to feel that deep, moist soil and you want to feel connected to the bees and how they know how to make honey and you want to feel the stars coming into you and you want to feel yourself irrigated and penetrated by a king, by the beloved by power and by heart, by love moving inside of that power, then what you're yearning toward is sexuality that has remembered its place in all of creation, right? That there is a renewal of a covenant and that when we come to it that way, when we come to our bed, when we come to our lover, when we come to our own being and our own sexual pleasure in this way, and we remember what it's really here for, 
that it actually makes us one with all of creation. All of a sudden, all the layers of depth start to open up and all the many more petals of you as a flower, you as woman, I'm assuming most of you here are women, but you as woman, you open infinitely. That's the gift of female sexuality when it's remembered in its truth. Forever opening, yielding fragrance, right? Opening to what will come through, be born, be seated, be nurtured, be sustained in the entire world, in our worlds. So the sacred marriage. I wonder if you do feel that call. I wonder if you are hearing what I'm pointing toward, which is that both of these things live in our blood, that we want to be free. We want to be able to just have sexuality be what it is, natural, a celebration, open, right? In the fields, under the sky, just that, that beautiful openness. And we are also called to the depths. We are called to what is it when someone is in front of you, when you're choosing your, to share yourself with someone, what is it to choose soul custodianship of one another, to enter the bridal chamber, to enter this holy container, this sacred space, and to let something hidden and sacred up well between the two of you, be born, be seen, and be known through each other, right? What is it for you to call your lover forward into kingship and into nobility through the way that you inhabit your own sexuality, the way that you inhabit your body? And what is it for each of us to understand what the body of woman is? That this opens to mystery. This opens to the hidden sacred, the things that can't be touched and seen. Right? And the ones that we invite into that space, into our bodies, they get to travel to that place if we open it for them, if they know how to open us so that we can access that. Right? So this beautiful union, this bestowal of kingship to understand that it's not a power play, that it's a right of pleasure, opening, and honoring. Right? And that that is what someone who understands these deeper truths. So what is it for someone to understand how to open a woman's body? It's to understand sensitivity. It's to understand deep listening. It's to understand the power and the gift of penetration. It's to understand irrigating. It's to understand what it is to seed the body of a woman. Right? There is so much there. And it's those understandings that bestow kingship. Those understandings open the body of woman. And when that happens, that's when it's known that this one here is ready, is worthy of holding power, is worthy to rule, is worthy essentially to steward the community, to steward the fertility of the land, right? To steward this earth. So I realize I'm not going to confuse myself anymore trying to not talk in heterosexual terms. I you you can all you all know that this is this is a dance of essences and the way that you approach it or who's in front of you or gender and all these things is, is not the point the point is the essence right but when when we think about kingship right who opens your body what do they need to be an embodiment of in order to do that and to open you to the place where you understand that you are all of creation and where you can journey more and more deeply into secret hidden places that can only be unlocked by union. That's the other thing about Beltane is we remember that we are one unto ourselves, that creation is here. We are all. There, that is part of the mystery of woman. She's one unto herself. She can birth from herself, right? But, and, there are things that we can only touch in union, right? And that is where we 
have such a humility and a love and uh, it's where we become open and where we, we understand the interdependence of all of us, right? It's where you bow at the foot of the king, even though you already are the embodiment of the earth herself, because it's the king, it's that union, it's that touch, it's that penetration into the hidden sacred depths of ourselves that helps us to actually touch them and to open and open and open further, right? So there are keys in the doors, right? We have all these hidden sacred places. We can access many of them. There are always some that will only be accessed through the touch of this kind of union, of sexual union. That doesn't mean that we're not whole otherwise, and that doesn't mean that we can't touch all of creation ultimately, but there are particular mysteries, particular doorways, particular gateways that open only to this touch. But I wanna say something. When we celebrate Beltane and we remember ourselves as the bride, as the priestess, as the embodiment, right, the gateway, we can, and we remember the covenant with nature, with creation, right? Then there's something else to remember, which is that this covenant doesn't only get fulfilled by a man or by a lover. Sexual, you know, your body can open if you allow union with the wind, with the sun, right? With the moon, you allow yourself to be penetrated and irrigated. You open the fertility of the soil of your body to be seeded by something and that by something in creation that calls you, right? That actually touches you. You let yourself be opened. That's the lovemaking that you have always, right? As the May Queen, right? As Queen of the May. All creation wants to make love to you and that's true. So how do you bring yourself to that bed, right? How do you recognize that you are always the bride? You are always this one who bestows nobility and who, it's like, understand that the priestess in the sacred marriage, the May Queen, she is beloved, right? And that, this, when we talk about the sacred rite, the union of goddess and the horned god, you know, all of these, what we're talking about is a mystery that's been in creation since before we were here. This is a mystery unto itself. We get to touch into it. We get to remember it and be part of it anytime, all the time, right? It's not, we are never limited to who happens to be in front of us or whether or not our partner can or can't meet us, whether or not we have one. It's not that you are made to be opened and if there's not a lover sitting in front of you who's worthy and capable of meeting you there then there are plenty of other ways that creation wants to open you and will and will cherish you and will show you your deeper hidden sacred so that you can feel more of the truth of what you are that you yield a nectar when you're met right, from your soul, from, the, from your skin, from the light in you. You are made to give forth nectar. You are honey. You are honey-tongued, always, if you choose to be, right? But to allow yourself to be touched, to remember what touch it is that opens you, what elicits this from you, truly. Not just pleasure, not just what we think of as sexual pleasure, but your incarnation, you are filling with your own essence, bringing your soul to the surface. What does that? What moves you? And proclaim that. When we come to Beltane, we are renewing our vow also and our covenant with the beloved that we will, I'll remember you. I will look for you. I won't forget, right? When the wind touches me in this way, I'll know that that is you. When you move into the body of a man and he enters me and I open and this is, this, all of this hidden sacred opens, I'm gonna remember 
who it is that's opening me. I'll remember you. This is a relationship between you, woman, and God. A relationship that touches you, that opens you, and that moves through sexuality. Whoever is going to be, whatever is going to be the chariot that God rides to open you and to remind you of what you actually are, what woman actually is. You remember the truth behind every form. So is it the sun? Is it the wind? Is it the honey on your tongue? Is it your lover? Right? Is it prayer? What is it? But recognize who's with you. We are forever brides, and we are forever welcomed into the bridal chamber. And our lives, it's like we live for many things. We, we will survive for many things. There's a lot of, there's integrity. There's what we believe in. That's what, there's what we know, who we care about, and all these things. But this mystery, this is that which we would not just that we would survive what we would live for. It's like, this is why it's all worth it. <laughs> this is how I experience it anyway. That touch, that beautiful love and that passion, right? And it is beyond us. And that's one of the things we remember in Beltane. In all of our intimacies, in all of the ways in which we find union with a person, with nature, with our own soul, whatever, this is, we're both, we're both an incarnation of that and we're just inside of it. We are children of this union. And we, we find our place, especially in Beltane, we find our place by worshiping that, asking to be an embodiment of that, understanding that we're an embodiment, but also just bearing witness, letting ourselves enter worship, right? A state of worship, bearing witness to this union that has brought forth life all throughout creation and that keeps renewing us, calling us forward into union, calling us forward into the bridal chamber again and again and again. And these touches that come, you know, we can be open, we can be aware, we can listen and keep our eyes open and witness and proclaim when we're touched by this, but it's also a grace. We are beloved. We are cherished. And the rites of the sacred marriage are alive in our blood. When you wonder sometimes why you're yearning for something that you've either never touched or that you just don't ever see really exalted or acknowledged in your overculture, just know that it's because it lives in your blood and it's calling you forward to remember and it's calling you forward to bring forth what's inside of you and change what's around you rather than the other way around. Most of what's inside of you as woman, fully incarnate, the overculture can't see, won't understand and certainly can't evoke. You have to turn towards your blood. You have to turn towards what you know and what you remember. Honor that. Get behind it and follow it. And it will be what it always is, which is step after step after step into a mystery that you've never touched yet, right? But that you know that feels familiar. That's what it is to bring the sacred marriage forward, to honor Beltane, to honor what you are, life giver, opener of the gates, right? The bestower of kingship. And all of it, right? All of it, so powerful, so beautiful, but all of it, love, all of it. The body of woman doesn't only opens to the touch of love, right? to the deeper places. I mean, sure, right? There's lots of ways to have pleasure, but if you want to open to the deeper and deeper and deeper places inside of you, then what's entering you needs to be love. It needs to be 
whatever's entering you wants to be the touch of love. So I'm just going to read this. Um, there was something I thought was a question, but I miss it. Yeah. So Anu is saying, is seating of the body only for a woman's body and is the nectar only from woman's body? I don't know. I'm assuming most of you are women. I do know because I'm in a woman's body. And what I do know is that, um, yeah, we yield a nectar for sure. I mean, literally, Amrita, we yield nectar waters through our yonis, right? So in a way, the way I understand it is that woman is the nectar, man is the seed, right? There's a whole lot of places to go in that exploration. I know you've done this a couple times. You keep like having these wonderful invitations into these <laughs> doorways that open into these vast terrains. What I would say here for Beltane, yes, it's the, you know, in the Beltane right, which is the right of king and king and priestess, consort and priestess, right? That it's the, it, the king is the sea, the woman is the earth, right? The receptive, fertile earth, being seeded, being irrigated, being fertilized by her king, right? And why? So that she can bear fruit, so that, she, so that things will grow, <laughs> so that she can yield bounty, beauty, generosity, and abundance for her people, right? None of this, all of this is also a re-education of power, right? All in this, the sacred marriage, it's power, it's sexuality, and it's a re-education of all of those things, right? It's power that's given, that's earned through deep worth, deep worth as determined by how a woman's, how the woman's body opens, a woman's body opens, right? But together, what is this union doing? It is creating life, right? There need, both sides are needed. There's a holy, there is a reciprocity here. There is a, mutual worthiness right rising up when you think about coming the priestess and the king coming to this bridal chamber both have prepared for that meeting both of them have had to rise up have had to have a walk they've had to become what they were always meant to become in order to meet in that place they call each other forward Right? They call each other forward. The king calls the priestess forward as much as the priestess bestows kingship for the king. Right? They need each other. In the sacred marriage, we need each other. And there's mutual nobility shared there. And it's the nobility of the soul. And it's blessed by all of creation. It comes from the earth. We, we return our sexuality to the earth, to the place of life-giving during Beltane. We let it be what it is, truly, we remember. Um, so what I wanted to do, we just have a little bit of more time together, is, um, so that's the sacred marriage. I never feel like I quite do it justice, but I hope I was able to um, just ignite a few flames of remembrance in you. And I do invite you to consider your vow. One of the beautiful celebrations or ceremonies that happens at Beltane is um, couples 
have the choice to come to the Beltane fire and to renew their covenant, renew their vows to each other for a year and a day, right? So it's a hand fasting for a year and a day. So there's, there's, a, what, there's an invitation here during Beltane, both in your loverships, if you're in them, is to say, to, to sit with your beloved. See, I, I hold Beltane like this, every Beltane. I come to the Beltane fire, I offer my sexuality to it, I ask, I ask what is true now, what is current now, and I bring my partnership to it, and I ask, are we to continue? And if so, how? And I ask for the blessing of that. It keeps it current, right? This is a way of keeping our partnerships, our loverships alive, current, inviting them deeper and deeper, renewing our vows with each other. So this is a time of renewing vows. If you're in a partnership, you could do that together, right? Amazing. Such a beautiful, simple, holy thing to do for a year and a day, right? But, and, your vow to yourself, your vow to understanding you being the one to be noble enough to hold your sexuality, your being, your body as the mysterious, ever abundant fountain of wisdom, of nectar, right? Of of hidden sacred. So where are you with that? This is a really important thing to bring forward. And we, we do that by the Beltane fire, metaphorically or not. We bring it forward. How, how are you? Where are you in holding your own vow to becoming, honoring what woman is really meant to be? And the actual sacred capacities of your sexuality, of your pleasure, the soul making, the soul presence of your sexuality and of your body. There will never ever be an end to the mysteries that your body will unfold for you. But our vow again and again to turn towards that and to be humble enough to recognize that we're always still beginning <laughs> and that we're always at the feet of something. Beltane, we come and we're at the feet of the sacred marriage at the same time that we're rising up inside of it. So I invite you into that, just a consideration. If you are made to be an incarnation of the earth herself, if you are made to be an incarnation of the goddess herself, if you are made to be the one to call men into kingship, right? What does that mean? How, how will you hold yourself then? Right? All of your history aside, we jump over the fire and it's done, right? Up into the moment of the Beltane fire, you jump the fire, you let the fire take it and you let yourself be renewed. So this is your time. Nothing that has happened, no matter how it's shaped you, can come in between you and the bridal chamber, you and your rights as a woman incarnate, you and your, you and your rights as the priestess of the flame, of the earth, right? You and your calling to be a kingmaker during these times that need kings and queens who sit in real power connected to the well-being of all creation more than ever. Ah, so, blessed be, sacred marriage. So, I want to do practice together. Um, it sounds like, I think we should... So Lunar Beltane is this coming Thursday, the 7th. It's the full moon closest to Beltane, to, to solar Beltane. So it's a beautiful time. It's a wonderful, perfect time for you to consider from here until then, having a personal ceremony can be simple, can be more complex, but 
what vow would you like to renew with yourself? You can make a fire, you can just light a candle, you can be outside, you can be inside. The sacred marriage penetrates all things. It is made more manifest in nature. It is made more manifest when we can be under the sky and resting on the earth and watching the bees for sure. But it penetrates everything. You cannot be outside of it. It is what is always creating life and sustaining and inspiring it. So yes, so Thursday the 7th is Lunar Beltane. And I would be so delighted for all of you if you would light a candle, bring yourself close to the flame, sit, ask, pray, to be, just ask to be shown what's true about your sexuality. What does it mean for you to worship with your sexuality? If your vow is to say that your sexuality is for worship only, that it's not to be toyed with, that it's not that it is as powerful as it is. What would that mean? It could mean so many things. What do you want to honor inside of yourself? Or what do you want to honor or bring forward in any partnership that you're in? May 7th, Lunar Beltane. I'll be in ceremony myself, so it's nice to think of all of us um, having at least a moment together wherever we are. The practice I want to share with you is called the Congress of Heaven and Earth or the Lovemaking of Heaven and Earth. And um, it's a very beautiful practice. Let me see if I want to say anything else about it before we do it. Um, essentially, it is, it is the practice of joining with the lovemaking of Heaven and Earth. And... Um, in this practice, we recognize that this heaven and earth, the above and below the union is always happening and that we are children of that union. So we can, and we can join with it at any time. So it's basically this understanding that we can soften down and in and join with the lovemaking. It's an effortless joining and be nourished by it, be taught by it, right? The, the Congress of heaven and earth is both a nourishing practice that can, can fill the cup and bring us, bring that union within us, but it is also very educational. If you allow yourself to feel into and to witness the way that heaven and earth make love to each other, the way they elicit life and response from each other, you can learn a lot about what the overculture doesn't know how to talk about in terms of how your body opens what it feels like to be cherished, how you like to, to be met by power, you know, all these things, right? Anu saying, can she invite a partnership in during this ceremony? Oh yeah, this is the thing, right? This is your, this is your sexuality. This is your vow and your wish. You choose. Each of you is in a different place. Some of you, when you come to the flame and you're honest with yourself, it's going to be that you're going to feel by the Beltane fire that actually a year and a day of containing your sexuality, sealing it up, not sharing it with anyone, letting it, letting it build and potentize inside of you. Some of you will come to the fire and it will be clear that you are, you are open you're called, you are opening, you are ready to receive, right? And some of you will come to it and come to it with a partner and sit there or even without your partner, but sit and hold your partnership by the fire and ask, how can I deepen here? What truth is to be shared here between us? Where is trust where can trust grow more deeply? Where can we be, where can we bring each other more pleasure? What can, how, more, how much more honest can I be, right? Yes. Um, all right, let's do practice together if, if you can stay. Um, this is such a, Awesome practice. I love it very much. The Congress of Heaven and Earth. So 
if you can, if it's safe for you to do so. Inside of this, our intention to hold your intention, each of you, to, that you touch into this ancient right directly, right? That there be direct revelation for you here that is medicine for you right now on this life path that you're walking right now. What's in front of you, what, what your realm, what is, what has constellated around you, just that you come to this practice like coming to your own deeper well and be open to what's given. Honor what's given because when you come with this kind of intention, the mysteries open themselves for you. So go ahead and close your eyes and just soften down and back. So becoming more receptive, more magnetic, by simply softening into your back body, softening down into your belly and coming to sit right here. Resting down into your power, into your place. Letting all that would be forward moving in you or all that might be reaching out from here, letting it turn, come and gather here with you. We'll start by just beginning to fill from underneath, so dropping all the way down into your low belly, into your womb, your yoni, softening and opening to the earth. And just on every in-breath, sipping her nourishment, sipping her warmth into you, keeping it real. So if it's just the tiniest little sip, just barely beginning to touch your yoni, just barely beginning to maybe move up into your womb, just be real. Let this be true. Each in-breath, opening to let the fertile promise of the earth fill you. Dropping your tailbone like a spade into the good earth. Rooting, opening. Deep red ruby garnet. Green of growing things. Moist earth. Volcanic power. Just breathing every in-breath, sipping her up a little further into your body, filling your womb. Maybe beginning to fill your heart from underneath. Every in-breath drawing her up and in, every out-breath letting her circulate through your whole body, absorbing. Let your mind, your vision just be open. What do you see? When you open to her, are you seeing pure waters? Are you seeing the new leaves? Are you seeing lilac, smelling jasmine? Open all your senses to receive her moving up 
into you from below, saturating you. And here, one body with the earth, one body with the beauty of creation, full of her. Just ever so gently lift your chin. And soften to receive from above. So subtle, so gentle. Lifting your chin. Very gently exposing your throat. Opening to receive from above. And notice what comes for you, for the body of the earth as you. Is it a gentle, warm rain? Is it the snow? Is it golden sunlight? Is it a thunderstorm? Open to the above, open to the heavens. What does the earth in you fall down from her beloved heavens? How will he meet her? Gently breathing. Over your face and your skin, over the front of your body. You'll be gathering in your lap just drawing the heavens down deeper and deeper over and into your body, irrigating, seeding, and so you open all the way through your body and into the ground on which you sit. Feeling yourself full of the earth from below, her fertility. And full of the grace from above, touch from above. Letting the heavens move all the way through you to touch the earth and to fertilize the earth under and around you. And just resting here for a moment, witnessing, feeling. How the earth yearns toward the heavens. How the heavens are called to the earth. And then as she receives the heavens, what she yields in return.
resting into the lovemaking of heaven and earth, effortless, drinking from it, filling your body, filling your heart, your mind. Take a few deepening breaths just to soften back and down and in even that little bit more. Really gathering here. Bringing your hands together with your eyes still closed, just blessing your body, just feeling, touching your skin like it's this most rare and precious gold. Blessing your heart, your breasts, your womb. Recognizing your entire body. As a dwelling place of erotic beauty. Of yearning and the answering of yearning. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes and come back to our call together. We'll have just a couple of minutes to share anything that any of you want to share from that, either to just witness, have it witnessed, or to just um, even just to crystallize it for yourself, just to share. What's important, what, what's so powerful and beautiful about that practice for me is that Every time I do it, it's different. As long as I'm in that state, you know, we go to that practice for revelation. We go to be shown, right? So we're not going with an idea of what it's going to be like to, for the heavens and earth to meet. Every time we go to that practice, we go, we go new and fresh and we open the earth of your being right now. What is she calling down from the heavens right now? You know, and Every time there is this, there is this opportunity to be shown again and again from the, from the source, from the pure source. How does life open life inside of itself, right? How will we be opened? What touch do we really desire? What really opens us? What is fertility? What is it to be a cup overflowing or to understand that we are the body of creation? You know, for real, this isn't concept. This is incarnate womanhood. We're being it, we are it, we can feel it, not just thinking about it and hoping that it is. When we renew covenant with ancient holy rites like these that honor what we are really created to be, then we feel it. And that's what, that's what we know is true. Gretchen saying yummy and full, Midge saying juicy, tender, softening. Eris saying earth was calling and heaven was showering. 
Anna says she hasn't stopped weeping since the first licks of the earth coming up and in. Beautiful. Francesca has dragonflies and lily pads blessed with dew and afternoon soft sun. Anita is saying it yields something greater than the two, something not imagined before. Salma is buzzing. Yeah. I think when I send out the replay for this, I'll see if I can also send, um, there's a reading. I have a reading of the marriage hymn of Inanna and Dumuzi, and it's so beautiful be it, because it, it, it's erotic nature. And there's an invitation there that is profound, actually, in terms of like embracing our erotic natures in a way that is pure but still really erotic you know it's this <laughs> it can be both um devon says a bed of roses elena says just space to be between heaven and earth mm -hmm. now so it's fascinating last night she had a dream where she was in a giant stadium a bowl of the earth looking up to the heavens where sweets and candy were raining down it's beautiful that's yeah, beautiful yep beautiful well, thank you all. Let's close with a prayer. We're at time. Um, let's close in prayer together. So, um, okay, sorry, I want to read all the chats, but I, I, I can't. Um, <laughs> okay, let's, let's have a prayer together. Let's close this time in prayer and really seal it up. So. Close your eyes and just have a moment. First, just feel what you're feeling right now, whatever it is. From our time together, what is a flame or a light in you? What can you feel? Blessed Holy Shepherding Presence, thank you for bringing us together today. Join together, to remember together. The ancient rite of the sacred marriage. The goddess given gift of sexuality and pleasure. And the call to kingship that lives in each of us as incarnate woman. Help us to rise, help us to remember, to be gentle, to invite the world around us to rise into its own nobility. Be with us as we renew our vows, our vows to steward what has been given, what you've given us, what lives in us, our vows to love and honor, whoever may be walking beside of us. And our vow that our lives, our pleasure, our womanhood, our unions, be joined with the well-being of all of creation We are so much more than we imagined, and we want to remember, we want to serve. 
We want to open. We want to anoint. We want to be surrounded by nobility that reflects our own back to us. Bless our holy bodies, bless our histories, bless what has shaped us and brought us to this point. We bless and we seal and we step forward now over your holy fire, over the Beltane flame. And we receive your purifying grace. We receive your help and your washing. May all of life be blessed. May all unions know what they're really desiring union with. And may we remember, may we open our ears and our eyes and our bodies to be touched, to see and to hear all of your whispers and all of your powerful shakings. We want to know you directly near and true. Blessed be. Blessed be. Hmm. So thank you for sharing this time with me and with each other and for remembering together what's already in our blood. I'll send out a replay and with the replay I'm going to send out, I'm going to get this recording of the hymn of Inanna and Dumuzi to inspire your natural eroticism. So much love to all of you. And um, May 7th, I'll, anytime, you can do this anytime. You know, the sacred marriage is always happening. That was what, that was the message from the Beltane fire for me. <laughs> she was like, hey, it's real nice that you're honoring me right now. I appreciate that, but I'm always here. <laughs> so we remember that. You can do it anytime. But if you want to join with me in some form on May 7th, Thursday, under the full moon, by a flame of any kind, I welcome that. Yeah. Okay. So much love to all of you. Blessed be and happy Beltane.